Welcome everyone to Hillcrest Connects, where we briefly want to share with you what it means to meet together as we catch a glimpse of what God is doing in and through our congregation. We're delighted today to have with us Glenn Reynolds. He is our executive pastor. Welcome, Glenn. It's good to have you here. Great to be here. So COVID-19 has been going on for many weeks now, and uh, we just want to hear from you how that's affected you and how that's affected your family. Yeah, so Kathy and I, we've been in Medicine Hat for a couple of years now, and uh, one of the things for us is we, you know, gotten to know a number of people. But as the uh, COVID nineteen has has come along and uh, changed things up for us, it's changed up our schedule and on how we get together with our friends and our and uh, it make it changes how we, uh, yeah, just go about our daily life. One of our biggest losses right now is uh, seeing our grandchildren, and there was visits scheduled. Kathy was scheduled to visit with her mother up in Saskatoon. That hasn't happened. Um, you know, those are the kinds of disruptions that we've experienced. For myself, as I go to work regularly at the church and uh, work with the rest of the leadership team and the rest of the staff, uh, we get, I get quite a bit of interaction with other people. Uh, for Kathy, who's a little bit more gregarious, or a lot more gregarious, or even kind of a, an extrovert, it's probably been a little bit harder for her staying around home and, uh, uh, you know, kind of hanging out there. She, now that the weather's warmed up, Kathy's been able to get out more, and we've all been able to get out more, more for bike rides, and, and uh, as long as we're keeping her physical space, that, that helps, uh, you know, but that's... It's mostly been uh, those kind of losses with ex visits with extended family and getting out and hanging out with our friends, doing meals together with our friends. We're, we're missing that. So you're naturally an introvert. Um, How is it affecting you that way? Do you actually enjoy having more solitude or do you still need some of that, um, that relationship building outside of, outside of your home? Yeah, um, I actually probably have less solitude right now, you know, as far as uh, the kinds of demands on time, doing Zoom calls, those kind of things. There's a different kind of focus. But, you know, for us at the, as a staff, you know, as we changed over from, you know, to, to prepare for the lockdown, there was lots of things that were on my plate as we made some of the, the changes around how we use software, how, how we do our website. And, and there were lots of changes in the only place that required a significant amount of focus and, um, so those things re required a lot of energy, a lot of brain power, and uh, yeah, it, it probably, yeah, for me as an introvert, I s I'm doing okay and could, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the kinds of times that I get to concentrate on the work that's for me. So you're spending obviously a lot of time, a lot of extra time than a regular 40 hour week or anything like that. So how do you relieve the pressure? How do you um, relax? Yeah, for the first couple of weeks, I think uh, folks in my position, people in my position were going every day and long days. Uh, and for me, the accomplishment of the tasks was rewarding enough. And it was more a matter of, okay, watch yourself uh, because the, the time is, is going to uh, start to catch up with you. And, uh, you know, so just making sure that Kath and I had time together, uh, even so Sunday mornings, Kath and I come over and we hang out at the church together so people can come in and uh, pick up materials, drop off offering or uh, to be prayed for. And that gives Kathy and I some time, even while I'm still working. Um, so that's been good. Uh, again, with the warm weather right now, really enjoying getting out in my backyard to do gathering. I'm looking up uh, uh whether we call it our backyard or our back garden. It's, but yeah, we, we just moved into a place and there's lots of little things for us to discover and find out, oh, that's what's growing there. That's the perennial they planted. And, and uh, oh, that's how I use the race beds. Yeah. Those are the things that are enjoyable for me now that we're kind of over the, the uh, pressure of the first couple of weeks of all the changes that we had to make. So again, as an introvert, do you have any advice or recommendations for people who are introverts? Yeah, you know, I, I think... What I'm hearing from a lot of people is that uh, they need some away time from their family. You know, when people are doing work at home and school at home, uh, you know, they actually need to be able to kind of get out and to create those spaces. And and I think with our schedules uh, being so uh, 
so disrupted, our day so disrupted and constantly in negotiation, I think people need to be uh, a little bit more, you know, both uh, extroverts and introverts need to be a little more assertive and negotiate and saying, hey, you know what, I need some downtime and I need to schedule it in so that I have that, so that I can be with you, uh, my extrovert uh, partner, child, whatever, uh, so I can be with you uh, when you need it. I need, I need you to be, give me the space when I need it. So I think that's the really important. Um, again, for those people who are working at home, uh, I, I think the use of the social media and the Zoom calls or whatever it is you're using, Google Hangouts, whatever uh, medium you're using, those can really be draining for, for people who uh, need uh, to be able to pay attention to something else. And so I recommend to a lot of people when you're doing Zoom calls, if you find yourself exhausted, uh, turn off the camera. Uh, don't don't focus on the screen all the time. That's we you know j- just people don't normally do that. Give each other that much extended kind of concentration, and so so treat the the screen the the Zoom call the same way you would if you were hanging out with the person in the room, uh, and that helps I think. So do you ever turn off all your devices? You've got computers. I'm sure you got tablets. You got iPhones or whatever type of phone, smartphone. Do you recommend people just turn it all off? Um, yeah, I think it's helpful for your, to just kind of turn it off, to zone out, uh, and to be quiet alone. And, and I think that's true for all of us, that one of the kind of things that happens for us right now is because of all the changes and because we don't want to miss out on something and because we, uh, uh, yeah, everything's in turmoil, I think that actually there's a sense in which this is a good time to to kind of uh, let it go fallow for a bit and to to decompress and to turn everything off and 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 to just be quiet um, and that's that's really hard for us and that's it's, it's it's just the nature of humanity that we need constant noise and distraction um, for all sorts of reasons, but one of the things that all that noise and distraction does is it keeps us from uh, listening to ourselves and listening to the Lord uh, together. And so, you know, if you have a, a regular prayer time where you're just turning everything down off and not using any electronic device and you're just being quiet before the Lord, or you're sitting out in your backyard or wherever it is quiet in your house and just stopping and letting yourself be quiet mm-hmm. and listening to to the Lord and to what else is going on. So let's shift a little bit and let's talk about staff. You started in January and uh, COVID was kind of in the air, but uh, nothing where it is now. Uh, tell, talk, tell us a little bit about staff. What do you see in the staff dynamics and the personalities and, and how staff members are coping with this? And, and talk to us about um, how people can pray for staff and encourage staff. Yeah, so um, when I started in January, as you, as you said, COVID was kind of in the air. Uh, you know, practically speaking, it's like, okay, what is it that I have to contribute right now? One of the things that I saw is it would be helpful for the staff to start working in the cloud more. And so, you know, I, I brought, I said, hey, let's start learning how to use the cloud. Uh, and I I was working with the, our Microsoft Office 365 software. There's a plug, whatever, to to uh, that we already had a subscription for. How do we use that in the cloud? And and so I was working on a number of those things, partly because it was something I knew to do, and it was a, kind of a need that I heard people expressing. Um, and uh, we were working on that. And as COVID became more and more apparent that it was going to there's going to be something happening uh, that that we're going to see. Uh, limitations on travel and gathering. We, we couldn't know that it was going to look like this, but we knew that something was was coming. And so it, it became even more for, important for us to find other ways to be able to communicate so that we could work at home for those who had to. Um, and, uh, and and so as, as I was leading the staff in that and as we were preparing for that, it was, you know, we had some... Uh, oh, a little bit of resistance. Oh, you know, it's not that serious. And but no, let's keep going. And and the staff took that up. And uh, so 
as we came into the the lockdown period when it started to kind of become apparent to us, and you know, for me, I always think about the Wednesday. I don't even know what Wednesday it was, except for it was the Wednesday when the NBA was when it was a suspension, right? You know, that was the kind of uh, uh, day when people finally got that this was serious. The the whole of North America got it at that time, and um, you know, there was other things that happened on that Wednesday, but that was kind of the one that reached everybody. Um, and, and as we were kind of like hit that Wednesday, I think as a staff, we were prepared for it uh, in, in a sense. We were thinking about it. We were praying into it. We were planning for something different. And, um, and as we went into that and started making the changes, I, was, I just was so thankful. And I've been thankful for, from the beginning, you know, as I started uh, – interviewing and, and candidating for this position back in, in the summer. I've been thankful that I've been able to join a, a staff like, uh, like was already in place here at Hillcrest and that there are so many people who were innovative and creative and faithful to the Lord and ready to serve the Lord uh, in whatever the circumstances were given to them. And so it became even more apparent as we started seeing these changes and people responded well to them and you know we just we we did a number of kinds of things we made sure that our our frontline person was safe you know uh, you know we'd already been setting up some protocols around increased hygiene and uh, but it's like okay as soon as the lockdown came in we still how do we now when we do have people come into the building how do we protect our our, our front line, our reception desk. How do we make sure that's safer? And so we just set up a barrier and we, we did a number of those kind of things and, and people took that up and people worked together. None of us knew how to do this, right? There was nobody who knew how to do this among us and, no, at all around, right? This is a brand new thing. And the staff just kept on thinking creatively and, and uh, courageously about how to do this, including how to take up even more software. So, you know, in, in the first week, it became apparent that of uh, our current web uh, site wasn't a uh, provider, wasn't doing what we needed. And so it's like, okay, let's get a new website. And and pastors like you, uh, you know, it's like, okay, after a couple of weeks have learned how to use it and are, are, are putting in their own content and, and learning how to do that. Uh, that's, it's, it's been, I've been so proud of, of the, the staff of Hillcrest and the pastors of Hillcrest. And um, I'm, I've been so excited about the way in which uh, we've been able to listen to the Lord together and pick up on things. So it became apparent to me that as important as making sure that we did Sunday morning really well so that our people continued to hear great content from Pastor Steve and, and be able to enter into the worship, it was also important that we continued to make connections well. And, and when we started to think about it in that way, it's like, okay, th th there's one group that's kind of really focused on doing our content and making sure that's, that we're preaching the gospel well and people are hearing good word from the Lord and being led into worship well. The rest of us have to focus on connections. And the, and the rest of the pastors and the other staff got that message and they r started figuring out ways on their own to reach out and make sure that they're connecting into the people that have been ministering to in the past. So what do you see as the challenges right now? What's fatiguing the staff? What's, um, what's the hardest part for the staff and what can people do to help and to pray for them? So I, right now, I think our, our staff have overall um, been watching their own time. And that's one of the things that's like, hey, make sure you're taking your Sabbath. And, and uh, so the, the, the different pastors especially, but the other support staff, they, we have to be making sure that we're watching our time and, and pacing ourselves. We're not sure how long we're in this for. Um, and so it's really important that we have people praying for us and supporting us around wisdom about how we're using time, including that we're having that quiet time ourselves, that we're, we're drawing upon the Lord for our strength for, for these days, but we're also taking the rest that we need because in the weeks ahead, um, as we start to 
open back up again. We're we're not quite sure what that's all going to look like. We're going to have to like do a number of other changes back. It's not going to be like next, you know, a month from now or two months from now. It's, everything's back to normal. We know how to do things. We're going to have to be in continuous learning mode how to do this well. And that continuous learning requires, uh, you know, energy and strength. And so so pray for, for our staff that they'd be wise in their use of time now so that they're ready for what's next. Um, I think that uh, we need to be praying for our staff for their home life, right? You know, that they that they are able to uh, be a blessing in their own families and an, an encouragement in their own families. Uh, pray for our staff who have uh, loved ones who are threatened by COVID. And, uh, you know, we have a number of, of uh, folk that are in nursing homes. And when... Uh, they and and even when you know even if they're not in nursing homes, uh, if they are threatened with COVID and and get it, then they kind of access to that to, to those people. It's yeah. it's there. It's gone. So so to me, that's something that weighs heavy. And we just had recently one of our senior leaders in the in the church. She lost her grandfather and didn't have any time with them. Right, and so. That would be true of all of us that we, you know, that with elderly in, in our, you know, that are threatened by COVID especially, it's like, how do we connect in with our parents and our grandparents who are, are there? But, but to, um, as a staff bears other people's grief, they also have to bear their own grief. And, and so, you know, our staff are uh, listening and praying for, for you all, right, for our congregation, they're, and they're going to be bearing your burdens, but... Be, but be praying that they'd be able to take their burden to the Lord and take them well. And can you give us a glimpse of what you think the new normal is going to look like or even what you hope the new normal looks like? What's the future hold for Hillcrest? So one of the things that attracted me to Hillcrest when I came here as, as an attendee uh, and then later on as Kathy and I became members or uh, you know uh, joined in with the church um, was the way in which there was these different kinds of spaces here. And so we're sitting in the hub and, um, you know, there, you look around and there's all these spaces. And that, that's one of the things that really, it's like, this is a really cool place. There is these different zones of belonging uh, at, at Hillcrest. And so you, you know, have these rooms. You could go to, you know, for Alpha. You could go into the worship center. You had the youth room. There, there's different zones of belonging. And... Uh, we had part of our belonging extended out into the community, into the nursing homes. And we had chaplaincies out there, and, and those kind of things were important to us. But one of the things that COVID-19 has made us aware of, as we've all had to uh, connect in from outside, is, is we have to do a better job of, of making sure that uh, accessibility, online accessibility, continues into the future. And so that even um, that that while we were ministering to folk in the past, you know, through uh, giving them recorded material afterwards, we've heard so many much appreciation for people who's like, I can be there now, right? I can be there together at the same time, and we can join in with the pastoral chats that are going on. And so I think that one of the things that we're going to experience really practically um, is that we're going to see our are the zones of belonging include online accessibility on a, on a wider basis. But uh, when, when we get back together, we're going to see that even more. We're going to see that we're going to have a greater appreciation for what it is to, to belong to Hillcrest, the large congregation, and to belong to Hillcrest and the ver- various small groups and the various medium-sized groups. That, we're going to really take that uh, belonging way more seriously. Thanks, Glenn, for coming and sharing with us. We really appreciate your time and your insight, and we're really looking forward uh, to where Hillcrest goes. And thank you for joining with us. To stay connected with us, we again want to encourage you to sign up on Realm, follow us on our social media sites, or visit us at hillcrestchurch.net.